most of the attacks out there require either the user taking some action, inserting an infected USB key, clicking on a link, opening a malicious file, things of that nature, or you having remote access and have some credentials that you can uh, do brute force attacks or even if you have gain and exploit that vulnerability so you need to remote desktop access type of thing this attack is very different the zero log on attacks doesn't require any of those what you need to have this attack successful unless you patch it is two pieces of information that are not hard to get one is the host name of the machine you are attacking in this particular case is this one external web server and the IP of that box. Again, not pieces of information that you that are hard to get, particularly machines from the DMC typically uh, expose that information uh, or, or you get access to an internal machine in the network and then from there you can launch this type of attacks. It really uh, depends, but uh, those pieces, uh, you will agree with me that those pieces of information are not particularly secretive. Uh, you can get those. Now, the other thing that you need is, of course, network connectivity, this API connectivity into that box. So let's say I compromise a particular machine as part of a phishing campaign. The guy clicks on it. Oh, I get my foothold. Now I can launch this type of attacks with just those two pieces of information. And so we're going to be attacking this uh, domain controller. And here's a Kali machine that obviously has network connectivity to it. And just to show you how nasty this attack is, I'm going to paste the actual command. Oh, before I do that, let me actually show that in my curator system, I clear all the offenses because uh, in a subsequent video, I'll show you how you set your curator system to make sure you can detect these things, right? But if we paste this command in here, let me make the screen larger for you to see. You see that I'm exploiting this vulnerability, 1472, zero logon. And the two pieces of information are the host name and the IP address. Let me actually hit enter and see what happens. As you see, the attack is taking place. It's doing its things. And that's actually a very positive sign. And yep, you see that the exploit has completed. Now, what this attack has done is has allowed anyone to access this domain controller without any password. The password is actually being nulled. So if there's an account, the domain controller account has been changed and the password has been set to null. So anyone can uh, enter in there. As you see here, changing account password to empty string. And to prove, well, I'm going to actually exploit that in a second. But let's actually go into Curator and see what Curator saw out of all this. So I have two offenses that fire. This one I'm going to ignore for now. This is uh, part of the uh, Sysmon. You don't need Sysmon for detecting this, but since I have it in that machine, then uh, I had additional level of detection. But this is the, the offense that is important in here. Just two events. Let's actually take a look at those events. And, and this is the most important one. Notice that the that Windows is telling me that the account has been changed and that can happen all the time so that's not a something bad but when the username that makes that change is anonymous login and that's the indication of this particular attack in fact we can even display that rule and more on that later and we'll see that the rule acts on the fact that two those two th conditions have been met the first one is the account changed and the username was anonymous login that's how you detect this attack now let's actually go back to the compromise machine and do something nasty let's say that i want to get all of the ha get a hash dump of all the hashes of this domain controller if you do that then <laughs> the whole security of the of the company is, is actually compromised let me actually do that with a single command so here's the command. Oh, I actually am missing the S at the beginning for secret DOM PY. That's the the Python that will uh, execute this. And because it doesn't have to log in, it will be able to get from that host name and that IP all the DOMs. And here you have them. So the security of this machine has gone 
through the window. Uh, no pun intended. In part two of this video, I'll show you the details so you can actually recreate this attack and you'll see how to set up that uh, QReader rule and what you need to do uh, for Windows logs. Again, this does not require Sysmon, but you need to get some Windows logs to detect uh, this activity and I'll show you how you need to set that in the next video.